Zach Evans left high school as a five-star recruit, and he realized his talent immediately at TCU. They'll run it here. Evans a first down. Evans a lot more. Across the 10, and Zach Evans toward the goal line, waiting for a signal, and he is in. Another handoff and another big hole. Straight up the middle, Zach Evans, touchdown. After his sophomore campaign, the running back entered the transfer portal in search of the ideal fit to prepare him for the NFL, looking no further than Lane Kiffin's Rebels. Selling a pro mindset to me, handling everything like a pro, training like a pro, getting mentally ready like a pro. Just how he can give me the ball in different ways, you know. Lane Kiffin, everybody know the record, the resume. I mean, it just fit right with me. Evans, plenty of running room, into the secondary, breaking tackles. Coach Kiffin, he got an explosive playbook. I mean, that's all we really work on, explosive plays. Uh, the running back role is, you know, be a running back. When you get the ball, run. He's got some room. The 20, 15, to the 10, breaks the tackle, the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Oh man! It's just like when he runs, he kind of like a gazelle. He just glides. Like, sometimes like, he don't feel like his legs moving that fast, but he just picks up a lot of feel when he runs. He's gone to the house, goes Zach Evans. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Georgia Tech earlier in the year, that was definitely a, a big one for me just because I was able to see, like, you know, that was like the first time that I really saw his burst. But I would say the biggest one that's, that stood out to me was his Texas A&M run where, uh, you know, he was running, he broke it, broke contain on the outside and was running up the sideline. And, you know, Texas A&M had a DB and another guy try to collide with him. He trucked both of them, you know, he stepped out of bounds, but I think that was like super eye-opening for me. It was just, you know, how powerful he is too with just, you know, his elusive skill set as well, which makes him the full package. Evans' maturity is paired with the youthful nature of his backfield partner, 19-year-old, Quinshawn Judkins. Hey, you know I kept that one hand though. Don't try me now. Come on, man. Stop playing. I got that. Come on. Don't play with me. He's like almost like a kid almost. He, uh, you know, I don't think people understand how young he is. He came in at, geez, I think, yeah, he just barely turned 18 years old. You know, he's just, he's super fun to be around and he's a kid that just brings joy and, and uh, a lot of happiness to the room that he's in. Quinshawn for Heisman. I hope. <laughs> Kid K for Heisman. Oh God! <laughs> oh God! No rat poison. I smell a touchdown today. Y'all want that? No matter what Judkins is doing, he always has that signature smile. But when it comes to the field. He plays with an unmatched mean streak. Judkins, the running back, who gets the call, and the freshman goes right into the house. Touchdown, Ole Miss. He like my little brother. I ain't gonna lie. I, I love Quinshawn, man. I mean, the presence he get is just that. It's that demanding feeling. It's that you 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 feel him in the room. He ain't got too much say too much, but you you feel his presence. What I also I love about Quinshawn, he talk with his pads. He ain't finna do too much lip. A lot of people do a lot of lip service. That's what we call it, but. Nah, Quinshawn, he's going to drop him pads. Judkins laying into people, and he picks up a first down on a 12-yard punishing run. I've honestly gotten in a, in a bad habit at times of not carrying out my fakes. But, uh, you know, I tell the coaches, like, can you really blame me? You know, I like to watch what they can do, and I like to watch when, you know, Q can make something special happen. Judkins got a first down. He may go 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Seeing somebody work hard as he worked, and then, it show off better, or even the exact same way in the game. It's just, I don't know, it just make you smile. It's like, damn, he just did that in practice. Against a and I mean, how can you deny 200 yards? When you have both of them, you know, in my eyes, I see him as the two, right, two best running backs in the whole country. And, you know, we're super fortunate as a team to have him because, you know, when one guy goes out, you know, nothing's left behind when another guy comes in. You know, they fill their, fill their roles at a very high level and, and do things that are just, you know, it's almost like, You've never seen other people do it. The duo has propelled the Rebels to the top rushing offense in Ole Miss history, with Judkins smashing the 73-year-old single-season rushing record in the process. And they're having a blast doing it. All right, Long. Getting ready for Fast Friday. Me, we get a little bit more time to sleep in. Probably like an extra hour. 
And we got Fast Friday. Get ready for meetings. Figure out the openings for the game. And go Fast Friday. Get a little lift in. Just enjoy the rest of the day before we had to start meetings. It's been crazy though, you know, being in four and eight my freshman year. Just having a lot going on, new coaching staff, a lot of players leave, you know, a lot of people that came in my class and transferred, or like a lot of people I played with in the NFL and doing other things in life. But it's been fun. I just try to help out the young receivers, just try to get them wisdom and just try to get them tips about playing, like just the adjustments of college life, uh, the plays and how little tips they can take from me. And I feel like our class, we leaving the old Miss in the right position for the years to come. It's just been a blessing. I've been kind of knowing Malik since high school. I remember Malik was probably one of the top recruiter, uh, receivers coming out of high school when COVID came. And all we had to do was a chance. It was to work out every day. So we were working out together like three or four times a week. And that was when he was first enrolled in Mississippi State. So it's me, him, and Will. It's just a blessing to have Malik around. He's like my brother. The Egg Bowl rivalry may split the state in two, but it hasn't hurt Mingo's long-rooted friendship with the Bulldogs QB. Yeah, that's like, Will's like, he was one of my best friends. If I had to get married, he would definitely be in my wedding. Uh, I probably met Will in middle school. And really, I first started starting Will. I ain't really, I ain't really like him. I thought he was kind of like a little, a little diva for like a little kid. Cause you know, his dad was a, a coach. So everybody just like, he wanted to coach the kid. He's like a little diva. But when I got to know him, he was really actually cool, hard worker. So Will, he's been working. He had been practicing with the high school team since about seventh grade, so. Me and him had a couple times to practice with each other uh, leading up to going to varsity. And uh, I think my my sophomore year, me and him started throwing uh, every Sunday, like halfway through in the season. He wasn't even starting quarterback then. So we always wish each other uh, good luck before every game. We always try to give each other pointers about uh, other teams. So like we have a team who we're about to play in the week and they played them already. I just ask them like, what little tips do they see and feel when they play them? He'll try to get me points, and I'll try to get him points, too. But first, I just want people just to see, remember me as a good person, you know, just more than a football player, somebody they can look up to. I can be a role model, too, to try to be like a blessing to somebody. And my favorite game, I'll probably say all of them, but I don't know, I'll probably, you could say the Manning game was pretty big. But I still think, but I still remember my Bandit, uh my Bama game for my freshman year, just get my first touchdown where I was. See you with me, and I would be like, have a special place in my heart. Yeah. All right, let's wrap. Okay, so trainers are saying they can't play today for some reason. That's what happened. To, what happened to the trainers? Where, where are they at? I don't know. I think they're still working, doing their actual jobs today. So uh, you, you got the Shark Tank out here. We'll rep for a little bit. Whoever's got the Shark Tank crew, they look like they got some athletes. I'm taking them. They got a couple, couple guys that can run. I think I like the managers. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to the managers, though. I ain't, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Cavalry has arrived. Got some extra help. We'll be good. Feeling good. A little nervous, but that'll go. It's game time, we'll be ready. We don't want to let nothing get inside us, and we want to get enough jump to take away a lot of the windows, all right? Ahead of the battle for the Golden Egg, another heated matchup takes center stage in Oxford, the Turkey Bowl. Trying to go back to the basics today. Last year we got embarrassed out there. We we're trying to worry about too much how, how we look on the field. Go back to the basics, play good ball. Yeah. Looks a lot like last year right now. Let's take it back, take it back, take it back, take it back, take it back. Oh, yeah. We got in the bag, man. It's just too easy, bro. Plays after plays after plays. Because I thought it was going to be a lot of incompletions. I'm not going to lie to you. Red team needs a score. Don't see if they can cash in right here. Big turnover, though. Big turnover.
All right, so White's going to score on this drive. That's my prediction. And Red's going to have a chance to win it. And it's all going to come down to that. 50-44. 50 to 44. 54 seconds left. The white team is up. The red team needs a score right here. Show up today, so we had to face some different opponent. Shark Tank video. You on top, my friend? But uh, we still came out with the dub. It's back to the equipment room. University of Mississippi played Mississippi A&M for the first time in 1901. This will be the 119th time in one of the nation's most played rivalries. As if the emotions of the in-state rivalry weren't enough. I ain't nothing like it, bro. Playing against your old team on senior night. Best team in ever. Ah! Senior night gives the Egg Bowl extra meaning for everyone involved. Ain't no other place like it in the world, baby. In games like this, there's a lot of people counting on you that aren't just in this room. You gotta show them what you're made of. Show them who you are deep inside, okay? Like we said, do it for this team, do it for all the people that played at Ole Miss, but in these games, you gotta dig deep and you gotta be ready for war. Ole Miss and Mississippi State about to meet in the Egg Bowl. I mean, rivalries are what college football is all about. I'm telling you, these people are wired for this football game. We're in store for a great one tonight. Dart and company moved the ball well on their first three drives. Dart wants to throw, fires deep out. He's got Heath right out of the gate. Caught at the 40. Quick pass near side, caught by Heath, stiff arm, he's knocked out of bounds, a former Bulldog played for the Rebels. But had to settle for field goals for all three. Leaving plenty of work to be done on the defensive side of the ball. Rogers scans, forced out of the pocket and sacked. Tavius Robinson brings him down. Snap to Rodgers, pressure up the middle. Rodgers, time in the pocket, in trouble. There comes the pressure again. Ball is out. Old miss. And Griffin got back there and recovered him for the Bulldogs. Rodgers wants to throw, being chased, runs to his right, throws it away in the sideline. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! On the 50-yard line, there's a snap. He wants to throw, and that one's hit at the line of scrimmage and spiked. It's J.J. Pegues who knocked that one down. Double sets receivers, top and bottom of the screen. Rodgers forced out of the pocket. He's picked off. Picked off by Ole Miss's Otis Reeves. Ole Miss would quickly convert the turnover into momentum with a gutsy play call. Probably, Fourth down, a there. yard and a half. The Rebels are going for it. If yeah. Pegues gets in here, hey, he's a former tight end. He's a former four-star recruit as a tight end. He has got some skills now. It, it just would make sense. JJ! Got to occupy. Play fake. There he is. Pegues! Big man, celebrate. Hey, let's go. Will Rogers had been held in check for the bulk of the first half, but in hurry up mode, he found a spark. Back to throw. Rogers steps up in a pocket, swings it near side, got his man at the 45, the 40, down the sidelines and out of bounds of the 30 is Caleb Ducking. Third down for the Bulldogs, third down and 10. Here comes pressure. Rogers steps up, fires. He's got his man at the one and spinning into the end zone for a touchdown. The Rebels didn't have him covered, and that is a huge play for the Bulldogs at Mississippi State. They cut it to 16 to 13. The Bulldogs would get the ball first in the second half with a chance to pounce. 
There's the snap again on third and two. He's looking to throw, being chased in the middle, back in the backfield. He'll be sacked all the way back at the 44-yard line. K.D. Hill right up the gut. To all the kids out there, man, you can do anything, man. Just dream, man. Dream big, man. Back to throw. Rodgers being chased. Hit in the backfield. Ball is out! Rebels got it! Fumble recovered by Ole Miss from the offside. The hit was by Tavius Robinson and recovered by Cedric Johnson. The takeaway had set the Rebels up for a quick score, but once again, it would mean converting on fourth down. Fourth down and one instead of the field goal. The Rebels going to go for it right here. Pistol formation with Judkins. He's going to hand it fake to Judkins. He's going to run right. Throw toward the end zone and incomplete. Wow. Nobody was open on that one. He's looking for piggies. Fool me once, but not fool me twice. A game that had seesawed back and forth seemed to be settling in for the Bulldogs. Third and six. Ball at the 22. Rodgers to throw. Has the receiver wide open. Ra Ra Thomas. 21 yards. Swing route right out far side, and the ball is dropped. I'll tell you what, that could be a fumble. They're calling it an incompletion. That was close to a lateral swing route to Mingo, and he dropped it on the far side of the field, and they're going to call it an incompletion. The previous play is under further review. And, Lewis, this call at this stage in the game. In essence, could be the game. With where the ball is spotted, with Mississippi State clearly recovering if they rule it a right. backwards pass. After further review, the pass was backwards. No. In the immediate continuing action after the whistle blew, there was a recover by, recovery by number 44 for Mississippi State. It will be first and 10, Mississippi State oh. at the 30-yard line. Wow. That's not correct. Well, with 7.15 to go, this is a gigantic break for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. This one means stop. Yeah, you got to squeeze that clock if you're Mississippi State right now. Two backs in the backfield. There's a handoff and running to the left for the Bulldogs to the 10 to the 5. And diving for the pylon is Dylan Johnson. Are they going to give it to him or say down at the 1? They're marking it at the 1 yard line. Clock winding down. Rodgers fumbles the ball. Ole Miss recovers. You have got to be kidding me. The last six minutes of this game, regardless of the outcome, will go down in egg bowl infamy. Ole Miss has to go 99 yards. Dart over the middle. Caught. 341 left. Bulldogs leading 24 to 16. With jet sweep coming from the left side to the right. That's D. Wade. He gets it out to the 25 yard line. They're going to go all tempo all the way. Dart to the sideline. What a throw and grab by Malik Heat. Here comes fourth down. Here comes the pressure. Dart over the middle. What a catch. Jordan Watkins. Pressure came, Dart got it to Watkins. Still light for the Rebels with a minute 31 left. Ready again, fake to Judkins. There's a pass, he's got it wide open! Caught! It's D-Way for the touchdown! So now the two-point conversion after the longest touchdown drive of the season to tie the Egg Bowl with a minute 25 left. We got, we got a jumbo package in here. Not sure what this is going to be. Just to tie it. 
Dart, quick pass, shovel in the middle, falls incomplete, likely puts that golden egg 90 miles back to Starkville. All right, guys, I feel really bad for you, okay? Everyone, but especially seniors. But it's like any game, any game, any team, you let them hang around. You know, we had the lead and we let them, we play horrible defense the first series of the first half. We play phenomenal every other series and then horrible again the last series of the first half. You know, we get some momentum of the touchdown. So, and then come out and play terrible on offense for the third quarter and half and fourth. So, it's really, you know, discouraging because. You know, when you give your best performance and you lose, those days happen every once in a while. This was not that. I feel bad for you guys. I wanted you guys to have a great night, um, you know, keeping the trophy and everything. So that's about all I got for you, man. All right, bring it up. Let's go. Buddy up. It does remind you, you never know what play, why you got to keep playing. The game looks like it's going to go to two-score game, going to be over. The ball is on the one. We keep playing defense. We get a turnover. We go all the way down to score. There's still a minute and a half. We make a two-point. All right, we got a chance to go win the game. So you never know what play. It's why you got to always keep fighting. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Team.